Hello, good day. Welcome to our English class for this week. Week 1, quarter 3, our lesson is all about organizing information from secondary sources. Are you ready? Let's start! At the end of this lesson, you will be able to, number 1, determine secondary sources of information. Number 2, note important details in secondary sources of information. And number 3, Organize the information from secondary sources using outline and graphic organizers. Organizing information from secondary sources. What do you mean by secondary sources? Secondary sources were created by someone who did not experience firsthand or participate in the events or conditions you are researching. They are generally scholarly books and articles. Again, secondary sources, these are the books that you are reading. Because books or encyclopedias or any other articles are based on primary sources. A secondary source interprets and analyzes primary sources. It offers an analysis or a restatement of an event or discovery described in primary sources, or interpret, explain, or summarize primary sources. These sources are one or more steps removed from the event. Some secondary sources are used to persuade the reader and may be considered less objective. Secondary sources may contain pictures, quotes, or graphics of primary sources. Some types of secondary source include textbooks, journal articles, histories, criticisms, commentaries, encyclopedias, dictionaries, thesaurus, Nonfiction books, internet, newspapers, atlas, almanac, biography, periodicals, opinion pieces, and may also include radio or television documentaries or conference proceedings. Another example of secondary sources include a scholarly journal article about the history of cardiology, a book about the psychological effects of war, a biological or biographical rather dictionary of women in science, an April 2007 newspaper of magazine article on anti-aging trends, Organizing information from secondary sources may be done in two ways. The first one is outlining. It is like the blueprint of the most important information found. In outlining, you identify the main idea in a paragraph and list the details that support it, making it like a summary. Number two, using graphic organizers. A visual and graphic display that depicts the relationships between facts, terms, and or ideas within a learning task. Example of graphic organizers include semantic web, concept map, story grammar, Venn diagram, t-chart, timeline, among others. So let's try to answer this one. Put a check on the space provided if it states a secondary source and X if not. Okay, so again, if you want to have more time on this, you can stop or pause the video for you to answer it. Okay, all right. Now, if you are finished, that let's answer now or let's check this activity so let's start with number one a biography of rodrigo the 
So the answer is correct. This is a secondary source. Number two, the Declaration of Independence. Hmm. If this, this Declaration of Independence is already written, this can be a secondary source. But if the Declaration of Independence is um, is really there on the event, if you are really there on the event, or somebody talks about it, that they already there, that will be primary source. But when we are looking for the Declaration of Independence as we are reading it or we are watching it, so that's already secondary source, okay? So number three, a TV show explaining what happened in Vietnam, so that is already secondary source. Number four, website describing what the first World's Fair was like. A website, it is already a secondary source. And number five, Daniel Padilla's diary describing what he thought about the pandemic. That is not a secondary source, so that will be an X, okay? Because that diary is a primary source of information, okay? So I hope you got it correctly. Let's go now to the next slide. Now we are going to read an article and note the important information, okay? So let's write your answer on the blank after each question and in the graphic organizers. Okay, so let's read first this short article. Deped Limits Screen Time for Online Class by Merlina Hernando Malipot. The source is actually um, from the author Hernando Malipot Merlina. September 4, 2020. So this is, uh, the source is from a website. All right. So now let's read. Department of Education or DepEd reminded teachers and parents about or that the screen time for students who will be attending online distance learning or ODL classes this upcoming school year must be limited to one to four hours daily depending on their respective grade levels. San Antonio noted that schools may adopt a combination of synchronous and asynchronous online teaching in consideration of the screen time guidelines by age as recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics, AAP, and World Health Organization, or WHO, or WHO. For kindergarten, the prescribed screen, screen time should be, a maxi should be a maximum of one hour daily. For pupils under grades 1 to 5, the DepEd said that the maximum should be 1.5 hours daily. For students in grades 6 to 8, DepEd recommends a maximum of 2 hours screen time daily. The DepEd said students in higher grades, such as those in grades 9 to 12, will be allowed to spend a maximum of 4 hours daily, 2 hours in the morning, and another 2 hours in the afternoon, a screen time. In the preparation of the weekly home learning plan and class programs, DepEd enjoined teachers and schools to comply with the recommended screen time for learners. So let's answer the questions after reading the article. Okay. So again, if you need to pause this video for you to have enough time to answer, you may do. Okay. So now let's check your answer. Let's start with number one. What type of secondary source was used? Yes, you're correct. It's an article. It is an online article. Number two, what is the source of information? This is actually from a website. Number three, what is the article about? This is about the limit screen time for online classes, according to DepEd. Number four, based on the article, which learning modality, modality is the limit for screen time applicable? Of course, if your answer is online class, 
your answer is correct. Okay, number five. How many hours is the allowable screen time limit? Actually, it depends on what grade level, level are you in. For example, you are on kinder or you are in grade 5 or you are in grade 6. So, it depends. So, later on, we are going to answer that. Okay, so I have that table later. Okay, for number 6, what in important information is shared in the article. So now we are going to complete the graphic organizer. So number five and number six are actually connected. Okay, so now let's move on to the next slide for us to answer that. Okay, so let's answer the graphic organizers. The first, um, the first part is the grade level and the second part is the screen time limit. Okay, so let's start with the kindergarten. Kindergarten has a one hour daily screen time limit. How about grades one to five? If your answer is 1.5 hours daily, your answer is correct. How about grades six to eight? That's right. Two hours daily. And the last one is the grades, uh, grades 9 to 12. Four hours daily. So let's read another article carefully. Organize the important information from the article by completing the outline below. Are you ready? Now let's read. Kites through the ages. Children and adults fly kites on windy days. The kites come in different sizes, colors, and designs. Some kites look like flaming dragons. Some look like giant birds. Some look like teeny weeny butterflies. Most people fly kites for recreation. But flying kites had other uses. In the United States, kites have been used in scientific experiments. The National Weather Service made kites that carried weather instruments. Military officers used kites in observing enemies. They used kites too to send messages among troops. In Asian countries, kites have cultural and religious importance. The Chinese flew kites over their homes to fly out evil spirits. The Japanese flew kites to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. To some natives of the Pacific Islands, kites symbolize life and death. And Polynesian flew bird-shaped kites as messengers to heaven. So the source is... Um, it is written by Ab Abadilla Clemens um, in 1992. This is developing, oh, this is developing reading power six. Okay, now let's try to answer this. Um, let's try to answer the outline after this. Okay, so I hope you're ready. Okay, so now let's try to answer this outline. Okay, so I hope you already read and understand the article. Okay, so again, you may post the video for you to have enough time to answer this. Okay, so let's now check your answer. Okay, so for number one, so this is for paragraph number one. So how kites look like? So the first one is... Okay, so now let's answer this outline. So let's start with paragraph number one. So how kites look like? Actually, you can answer for number one. Some kites look like flaming dragons. Two... Some look like giant birds. And number three, some look like teeny-weeny butterflies. Okay, so you can rearrange that 
sentences. It's either from number one, number two, or number three. Now let's move on to paragraph number two. The uses of kites. The first one is for recreation. And let's find out what can be put for number two, three, and four. So we can add another one for number two. Okay, so it can be used in scientific, scientific experiment. For number three, um, it carried weather instruments. Number four, it can be used in observing enemies. Or you can also add, it is used to send messages among troops. Okay, how about number three or paragraph number three? So for paragraph number three, you are going to find the main idea. What is the main idea for paragraph number three? I hope you would have the same answer, okay? Yes, so kites have cultural and religious importance. So the first one is Chinese. For Chinese, according to Chinese, it, uh, it is, this uh, kites is to fly out evil spirits. So they use kites to fly out evil spirits. How about for Japanese? So the Japanese flew kites to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. For number three, um, to some natives of the Pacific Islands, kites, uh, kites symbolize life and death. And for Polynesian, they flew bird-shaped kites as messengers to heaven. Okay, so I hope I hope you already answered this with flying colors. Okay, great job for that.